Hello everyone from OneWrestling.com. This is Bill Apter and uh, Jerry Briscoe. Welcome to the Apter Chat. You've been here uh, before, but at many of the uh, conventions in the past that we've caught up with each other. That's right, Bill. It's always a pleasure here to work with you. I'm doing this new technology, Skype. Now I'm really impressing myself, and I hope <laughs> all the uh, the racing fans out there that uh, I'm technology bug now. I no, you're doing great. You're doing great. I taught. I I did all this myself too. People said, you know. Uh, after you used to take pictures in the bathrooms with the wrestlers there against the wall, then you went studio photography. What are you going to do next? We're doing the the Larry King Skype look here. Man, at times of advance, I remember you taking pictures of me in the West Palm Beach bathroom. Yeah, yes, yeah. And the shower only. I was no, no, no. We 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 we're not we, we're not going there. We're not going. Well, there. but posing pictures, shower with clothing on. Yeah, but it, we we did that where the only place to take some of the the posed photos was in the the shower stall when a guy wasn't showering. I would put somebody in there and take take pictures because that was the only clear wall on the whole building most of the time. Sure was. Times have changed now. We got all these luxury arenas all over the place and. Uh... Places where photo rooms, they got everything, oh, media everything, rooms, yeah. got it all now. Yeah. Now, by the way, I want to let people know that if you see Jerry looking up like he is right now, that's only because he's trying to monitor on his monitor there where he's looking. But this is perfect, right? I'm going to show her by my ceiling. I showed it to you. When you I did. Incredible to, ceiling. You got a incredible. really nice ceiling with a ceiling fan down there in Florida. Ceiling fans are essential. Well, we, we're going to uh, we're going to wait for another uh, opportunity to do this here. Well, there it is, there it is. There's the ceiling. We have hit the ceiling. So the reason I brought you on uh, today that I, I had uh, we are friends on Facebook, and uh, earlier in the day uh, I saw you post a tribute to uh, the late great and Oklahoman. Did I pronounce that right? Oklahoman? Close enough, Oklahoman, yeah. Oklahoman, May Young. Uh, we lost her at uh, 90 years old. And I, I wanted to talk to you. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm reaching out to a lot of people, but you were one of the first here because you knew May like almost forever, didn't you? Well, I, actually, I met May Young when my brother Jack uh, started in uh, the business back in 1965. Okay. So uh, one of the first live matches I went to in Oklahoma City, May was there with the fabulous Moolah. So I had the opportunity to meet her. I was still in college at the time. So I had the privilege of knowing May from 1965 to present. And uh, what a great lady. Do you have a, uh, uh, what, what was your fondest memory of uh, May Young? Because I know you were on the road and traveled with a, a lot of the, uh, uh, the Moolah troop back then. What do you remember most about May Young? Well, May was a, a, a very, very fun. So I uh, just wanted, we, we were, <laughs> we had a technical glitch. This is technology, right, Jer? Right, that is fine. Terror, terrible glitch. We, t a technical glitch. I'm having a technical glitch with my mouth at the moment, it seems like. But you were saying that May Young was a, uh, uh, had a great sense of humor, a very fun-loving person. She was, a, she was a very fun-loving person, and I used to ask May questions because back in the territorial days, the women would come in for a week or 10 days and make the loop with you, and then a lot of times they'd travel with you. So I was curious just how the women were treated in, in other areas because Leroy McGurk was, you know, as you know, was, a, was an old-timer when I even started. Yeah. So I'd sit in the car and I'd ask May questions, you know, well, you know, how is it, were you, how you guys re, re, uh, responded to when you go to Kansas City or Minneapolis or Florida or places like that? She would always have a funny story about one of the towns or something like that. And May was always interested in, in what I did and what my brother did because a little known fact uh, about May Young. May Young, in the early days of Oklahoma statehood, May Young was the first woman ever to make a high school men's wrestling team. Really? See, I never knew that. She competed against uh, actual high school boys, and she was so tough, she would beat up all the kids uh, in <laughs> school. And so the wrestling coach came to her and said, "May uh, Johnny May, why don't you come out for the wrestling team and do this, you know? Yeah. 
and uh, do it for your school instead of just fighting all the time. So she went out. She pinned the guy that was a starter on the wrestling team. Really? Uh, and became uh, the first letterman there in Sand Springs, Oklahoma. A lady letterman, uh, let a woman, I guess you could say. Yeah, really? On the wrestling team. And then she's the first lady ever to, to make a high school wrestling team in the state of Oklahoma. And you know what kind of tradition Oklahoma has yes. with the wrestlers. So, yeah. you, know, I, you know, I had to ask her how it was. And then, well, how did you get started from there? And from there, she went over to Tulsa, Sand Springs, is right out of that little suburb right, right outside of Tulsa. And so she went over there and challenged, actually challenged one of the male wrestlers and through her coach, her high school coach, she's still in high school and, and actually beat the guy. And I, I, I seen your moment. I can't remember the guy's name, but then she got on the circuit and they started training her. And that's how she ended up in professional wrestling with off the high school wrestling team. Unbelievable. When was the last time you remember seeing her, Jerry? I saw May. It had to be the last Hall of Fame uh, a year ago. Okay. A year ago. And did you speak with her? Uh, I certainly did. I never failed to go over. And uh, unfortunately, at that time, May was, you know, having a little memory problems. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dagmar was with her. With her and who is Darlin that? Darlin Dagmar, so, by the way, for you fans who didn't. Who was, don't uh, know. Dagmar told her my name. Oh, she. She just lit up, and we just, you know, we're two old Okies sitting there talking to each other and reminiscing in the stories and how you doing, May? Well, you know, I'm not doing real good, but I'm you know, good enough. Uh, you know, I'm glad to see you. And she just brightened up and seemed like it made her day, and I certainly know it made my day. Yeah. So if you were the guy there that everybody would pick and say, we want to write something on her tombstone, this great lady who just passed away, what would it be? One of the toughest, most gentle, and competitive women I've ever known in my life. I know that's a lot of, for a headstone, but he couldn't write all the accolades that Mae Young is probably going to receive on, on a headstone. All right. Jerry Briscoe, thank you so much for being here at the After Chat to talk about the legacy of Mae Young. There's the ceiling again.